The question is, uh, is it a priority to regain membership uh, in the AAU? And the answer to the question is absolutely. Uh, that is by invitation. It's not like you fill out an application and click send and it magically happens. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to be recognized and invited. But the things that the AAU value around our research productivity, around uh, our student success, and so many other factors of our great faculty uh, are the same things that I value, and I can tell you the Board of Regents values extremely highly. So yeah, that is a big part of the future job that we all have together. Well, there are uh, somewhere just over a dozen different factors that the AAU considers uh, on their website. The, the question was, uh, what are we doing in, in an attempt to regain recognition and membership uh, in the AAU? And the answer to the question, in short order, is a lot. Uh, but you're, ref you're referencing the fact that uh, last February, we uh, officially combined what's called herd reporting with the National Science Foundation so that we would combine the academic medical center here at UNMC, research productivity, grants and contracts, uh, with the University of Nebraska at Lincoln, research productivity and grants and contracts. We did that. We, saw, we hit send. <clears throat> that should have a, a very significant uptick. And by the way, of the 71 uh, universities uh, that are members of the AAU, 57 of them have large, thriving academic medical centers. So this is the company that we need to keep and what we need to continue to work on. But there are all uh, other parameters that go into that as well, including faculty recognition, awards, publications, citations. Uh, the uh, academic success of our undergraduate students, uh, and those are all areas that we're very uh, focused on right now. I would say that's a work in progress. Uh, you know, there are just literally dozens of areas that we're looking at with our chief academic officers, uh, that we're looking at across all of our campuses, frankly. You know, those areas of success of our students, recognition of our faculty, our, our, our research productivity, are all areas that great universities, all great universities need to focus on. And we have been focused on it. Uh, what we need to do is work on how we report that and aggregate the data. Uh, so I'll just give you one other example. For a very long time, the, the Lincoln campus uh, used uh, a software application known as uh, Academic Analytics uh, to report uh, productivity uh, of individual faculty members, individual programs, departments, colleges, et cetera. And the Med Center used a different type of software to do that. So uh, as of, uh, believe it or not, March 15th, I believe, uh, if I'm correct, uh, we're now all reporting on academic analytics so that when the time comes for recognition, uh, and that, by the way, is reported by many to be a 10-year process, so it's probably not going to happen you know, in the next 20 minutes, but uh, it will now be done with a common reporting system. I have, uh, and indeed we had a great conversation about the future uh, of the state, and, and clearly uh, his vision and my vision for the academic success uh, of, uh, of our state, the importance of the university, uh, are highly, highly aligned. Uh, we talked about the fact that we uh, need to build the future workforce of our state, and in so doing, build the quality of life uh, for all Nebraskans. Uh, and uh, he was extremely congratulatory. And as you, I'm sure, know, I've had the pleasure of working uh, with then Regent Pellin uh, over the last decade, and now, of course, Governor Pellin uh, on many different areas. And uh, uh, we, we both look forward to working with each other for a good long time to come. Your 
Uh, a really important question. Uh, great universities uh, value uh, diversity of thought and many other dimensions of uh, diversity. Uh, frankly, uh, we need to be a welcoming uh, organization for all students uh, and faculty and staff that want to be part of our organization and frankly to build that deeply uh, into our culture of valuing and learning from multiple opinions. Uh, I don't think there's any difference of opinion on that uh, by our regents or, uh, or by the governor's office. Uh, obviously, those questions are being tested widely across our country today in both public and private university settings, in the halls of Congress, uh, in state legislatures, uh, et cetera. And it's going to take uh, a fine art of what I would call threading the needle to get it exactly right, because it has to be done in a balanced and thoughtful way. But we, we need to be a welcoming institution where people feel that they belong. Consistently. Are, are there specific programming or specific uh, things that you will do to promote that? Well, the university has a large number of programs in place, uh, I am sure, across all of our campuses uh, to create uh, that sense of belonging. You know, we, are, we attempt to recruit and retain students and faculty and staff from around the world. And we do that because they add value uh, to the university community and hopefully they decide to set down roots and become part of our Nebraska uh, community as well uh, long term. And we're very highly aligned uh, across all of those areas. As long as I am able to, I would be honored and thrilled to serve in this capacity. Uh, as I have said, I am a Nebraskan by choice, not by birth, but the last 10 years has been a phenomenal experience, and I would going to do everything I can to continue that. Well, I have a, per a permanent presence uh, here in Nebraska, and it is uh, my intention, assuming this priority uh, candidate phase of uh, 30 days uh, is successful, to uh, reside uh, in Lincoln uh, on Tuscan Court, uh, where the presidential residence has been and, and continues to be. Uh, but, you know, I have family across the country. I have grandchildren uh, in Chicago. and. Uh, and I look forward to spending time with them as well. I, I travel far more, frankly, for the university and for business uh, than I do for uh, personal reasons. I hope that my being named the priority candidate brings the broadest sense of stability possible. Uh, I, I look forward to working with our leadership team to do exactly that. You know, one of the very first things that I intend to do in addition to the requirements of being the priority candidate is to meet with every member of the Board of Regents, to meet with every one of our student regents and elected regents and listen to them about what it's going to take to, in their opinion, continue to build on the legacy of this great university. And I'm sure I will get differences of opinion, and that'll be an opportunity to bring people together uh, around a common purpose. I am absolutely convinced, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that our regents uh, and the broadest community want the very, very best for the university and what the university can and will continue to do. Uh, for the state of Nebraska. Different people are going to have different views on how to do that. I'm going to have my own views on, on how to do that. And one of the jobs of the president is to be a really good listener and to try to pull all that together.
Well, I've had the honor over the last decade of uh, seeing the university and the communities that we serve through many different lenses. Just yesterday, I spent the entire day in Scotts Bluff uh, meeting with uh, the community college leadership, the state college leadership, the hospital system, community members, alumni, uh, et cetera. So I have crisscrossed this wonderful state many, many times. But I will tell you, uh, my experiences uh, at UNO, uh, dealing with a very broad uh, spectrum of undergraduate and graduate students, my experiences in Kearney as we work together uh, for through the rural health programs and the health science education programs there. Certainly, uh, my experiences here at the Med Center have been nothing short of spectacular as it relates to the research environment. But I'll tell you that the last uh, years that I've spent serving in the role of the Executive Vice President and Provost have really given me a very different perspective of the breadth and depth of the Lincoln campus, uh, having worked closely with all of the academic officers, uh, in, including uh, all of those that lead INR and the College of Technical Agriculture. Uh, it has given me a tremendous experience uh, in understanding uh, the challenges and the opportunities that we have to work more closely together. So I, I know I have a lot to learn, and I know that the lens of being the priority candidate and hopefully being the president will be a very different lens than I've had. Uh, I am excited uh, by that, a little intimidated by it as well. And, uh, but I can assure you I'm going to give it my best, my very best. The question is, uh, given the lenses that I've had an opportunity to view the university system and the state through, uh, what do I see as uh, the highest needs uh, from the priorities for our students? Uh, we just need to make them feel welcome and we need to make them successful. We need to give them a solid vision as to what their future can be, let them choose among the uh, wide myriad of opportunities that we have across the state. But I want them to, you know, I'll tell you, if I, if I had it my way, I would, I would ensure that every Nebraskan high school student had at least one night that they got up at 4 o'clock in the morning in a cold sweat and said, if I can only go to the University of Nebraska. And that's what I want. And by the way, it would be okay if the students in the surrounding states and on the coasts had exactly the same feeling, which is what we hope to attain. And the way you do that is you not only provide them with unique and exciting opportunities, but you expose them to the best and the brightest faculty. You make sure that they can have not only experiences on six Saturday afternoons in the fall, but have amazing experiences in our research labs and out on the fields and in the areas that they're interested in studying. That's what's going to turn them on. Uh, to want to be part of our great community. And frankly, that's exactly what every member of the legislature uh, and the communities that we serve want as well. Yeah, well, certainly, Chris, thank you for uh, the question. Uh, the answer is really to just build bridges, communicate effectively, listen and learn to what their needs are, and then uh, work very, very hard to be sure that we don't disappoint uh, anyone. You know, there are unquestionably difficult decisions that have to be made every year, every month, every day uh, across large organizations. But the premise uh, needs to be going into this that the answer is yes to the things that they will need and that we just have to find a way uh, to deliver that. Uh, uh, the, as I said a few minutes ago, the stresses and challenges that are faced across higher education, particularly public higher education, are formidable uh, these days. But you know, I, I've learned a long time ago that every challenge is truly an opportunity. And if you view it that way, uh, there's amazing things that can happen. Anything else, folks? Yeah. Sure. What do you think makes you the best person to be in this position at this time? 
That's a difficult question because I'm, I'm not very good at talking about myself, and I, uh, but I'll tell you, uh, I've been involved in public higher education for decades of my life. As you know, many of you know, uh, I spent the first decades uh, as a cardiac surgeon uh, on the East Coast in Boston and in New York City. Uh, I had the opportunity to care for newborns uh, and adults. Uh, I can tell you just recently I received uh, an email communication from a former patient who chose to write to me on the anniversary of her cardiac surgery 37 years after her surgery was at two days of age. And she sent me a picture of her three beautiful children. She sent me a picture of her rock climbing experiences. And that gives one a perspective of, uh, of paying it forward, of, of real value. Uh, I was inspired as a high school student growing up in the inner city of New York uh, to have a career uh, that could do those sorts of things. And frankly, if you were to bet on the likelihood of that ever happening, you'd probably bet against it, uh, given the circumstances in which I grew up as a first-generation student, two working parents, etc. But I've seen that happen. I've seen it happen over and over again uh, to young women and young men. And I am really thrilled about the opportunity to inspire a generation of people who really want to reach for something special. And those kinds of emails, uh, you might say, are unique to somebody that has had a medical practice such as mine for thousands and thousands of patients that I've cared for. But you know, everybody has that kind of experience in their life that is really uh, inspiring. And you know, I, I still get a lot of those emails from colleagues and friends. I'll tell you, my cell phone has been exploding with uh, text messages today, literally from across the country, uh, of people wishing me well and thanking me for, uh, as the, to use their words, having the courage to do this. Uh, uh, I can guarantee you that during my time, assuming my priority candidacy is successful, that I will trip and fall. And no human being is perfect. And the, the magic solution there, as I've learned from 25 years in the operating room, is you got to get up the next day and uh, brush off and, uh, and fix what you can fix and move on. And, uh, and rest assured, I will do my best to do that. Anything else? Anything online, Bill? Well, if not, uh, I'm more than willing to speak with any of you individually, if that would be helpful. And, uh, and I wish you a great afternoon. And I thank you so much for joining us today, particularly on such short notice. But uh, Regent Schaefer and I both thought it was an important thing to engage you directly. And those of you that know me well know that I'm always available to you. I look forward to the next 30 days. Uh, thank you so much for being here.